Hi everyone, this is Ashley with JNA Travel Adventures, and in this video, I'm going to explain five ways to enhance your dining experience while you're staying at Cinnamon Dun Valley. Granted, the meals at Cinnamon Dun Valley are amazing, but by following my suggestions, your dining experience can be phenomenal. Make sure you watch the end because number five is very important. The Rahande Restaurant and Bar is exclusive for only the over-the-water suites at Cinnamon Dun Valley. And when you arrive for the first time, you will see that a table with your room number has been reserved for you specifically. That will be your table for the whole time that you are at Cinnamon Dun Valley. So, one thing you need to do when you first arrive for your first meal is just pause and look around and realize a couple things. First off, is that the building is just a roof with sides they can put down. And remember, you're in the tropics. So in the tropics, rain happens at any time and big winds happen. So kind of pause and decide whether the view is more important than having a more comfortable meal. The restaurant is designed into quarters, as they call it. Every meal, there's a soup corner. So this will be like today, there is turkey and vegetable broth. There's soups. They have these cool rooms. They use them for salads on one side, and I'll show you them on the other side that is actually desserts. And so they want to make sure things that need to be kept cold are kept cold. Then there's all these really cute, cute little salads. I recommend you trying these. They always have weird little names and they're not exactly what we're expecting in the States or in Europe, but for what they're doing, they're really good. There was one, like this one is a pasta pesto, which is not going to be what you expect, but it's really good. Then they'll have other little cold things like smoked duck and blue cheese and olives. And there's usually a bit of sushi in here and just a lot of little knickknacks that you would want to keep cold. And they keep it all protected by you having these sliding doors. Another one of their corners is their themed corner. This is going to consist of, yes, of things like, this is going to be a pasta day. So we have pestos and we have vegetables and we have Italian crispy chicken and foods that fit a theme. We have seen American where they had barbecue, not like Texas barbecue, but it was good. It was different than it was good. We've seen Japanese. There are different flavors to this corner which is their international theme corner. The third corner is always curry, Indian, Sri Lankan, Maldivian based. So like this is a cinnamon pork with spice peared, spice pears. Um, it is most of the dishes over here will be gluten or vegetarian free. They've all been very good on the taste. They've been using a lot of turmeric, a lot of cumin, cinnamon, it's just spot on. If you like any of the middle Asian types of foods, this section I've eaten out of every meal. Then you go over here and they have the Indian Middle, middle Asian breads. The papadons are wonderful. They're different. And the Roshi is their version of a naan, but it's not the exact same. It's more closer, if I had to say, between a cross between American, um, American tortilla, flour tortilla, and a Indian Middle Asian the final not. room, which I always have to finish up my days with, is this dessert room. They have everything from the cute little shot glasses full of mousses to any types of cakes and um, pies. They do a flan, usually of some form, which is unusual for us, but it is still a very good flan. I highly recommend the coffee flan. Then they have your ice cream station where they have the homemade marshmallows and ice cream. Their ice creams are kept over here in this cooler and they're egg free ice creams. They're still so, so creamy. And you have your fixings for your ice cream. And finally, we have the fruit section, which we have not had bad fruit. If you like bananas at all, try the honey bananas they have. They are so sweet. Oh, and finally, I've been so intrigued by this. 
this little dish that's in the dessert is always a local dessert. I've had things that were done with pastas, I've had things done with flakes, and there's always a, a sauce to go on it. Make sure you at least taste it because usually it looks kind of weird, but it actually is very, very good. The grill section consists of, he'll make pasta for you and he makes wonderful pasta. For breakfast, the grill. He has pancakes and waffles and French toast all the time, made to order eggs and omelets. And then my favorite, which kind of shows you how good they treat us, is that I like eggs benedict. And in having the eggs benedict, I want scrambled instead of poached, and he fixes them for me every morning as perfect as Over can here be. Here is a custom made salad bar. There's a wonderful lady that works back here, and she'll make it as big or as little as you want. Themed grill over here, which I have seen. So I have seen things from pastas, and what are we making today? I'm doing some nasi goreng egg. Okay. I'm doing some some bread. So they make homemade naan, which is to die for. It's just, it's amazing. And then they do, like you said, he's doing fried rices and custom again. You can go vegan, you can go vegetarian, or you can do like me and have them put all the meat in there. Book a romantic dinner on the beach. The staff does a great job of setting the scene with red glowing balls in the sand and coconut tiki torches and the private tool cabana. Now book before you leave home as the sunsets do fill up. Make the evening even more special. Instead of choosing the steak or salmon menu that's traditionally offered, ask for a local celebration meal as we did. You just won't regret it. I know it's easy to see the wait staff as just part of the system. To allow them to bring your cappuccino and pick up your dirty plates without ever exchanging a word. During your stay at Simon Dunn Valley, you will have the same staff helping you every meal. By asking the simple question, where are you from, I learned that our waiters were from many different countries I had never visited before. They shared the descriptions of safari jungles and of growing up on beaches on other Maldivian atolls. By the end of our stay, from their conversations with me, I felt like I had visited the whole region and not just one sandbar. I have to admit, when I arrived at Simondon Valley, I thought of all Middle Asian food as Indian food. Think butter chicken and tiki masala. By talking to the staff, I learned the differences between Sri Lankan dishes and Maldivian dishes. They also taught me things like what condiments and what breads go best with which dish. This gained knowledge took my foodie experience to a completely different level. See this creature in the picture? It showed up on the rocks outside our suite the morning before and the morning after a full moon. I took this picture to breakfast and asked our waiter if he knew what it was. He didn't. A little while later, he brought over a buddy and asked his buddy if he knew what it was. These types of conversation with the staff continued from breakfast to lunch and to dinner, with different people stopping by and looking at my picture, giving me guesses of what it was, and telling me about creatures from their home regions and home countries. By the end of the day, I felt like I had toured an amazing aquarium. Ask about the flowers, ask about the crabs and the birds, anything that's not something you see in your home country. The staff will not only tell you what's going on, on the island, but they'll also tell you about these types of things from their world. In this era of COVID right now, where we can't go and see, their stories will make your visit even more enriched. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna find out more tips and techniques and tours of the places we'll be going in the future, please subscribe to our channel. Have a good day.